I want to get into the book with the last five minutes that we have. Homegrown, Timothy McVeigh and the Rise of Right-Wing Extremism. Uh, what is the premise behind this book and why did you choose to write this? Um, the Oklahoma City bombing was April 19th, 1995. Um, two years later, uh, McVeigh and Nichols went on trial. The trial was moved to Denver. Um, and uh, I covered the trial. Um, I, I was then working for ABC uh, and The New Yorker. So I, I you know, I, I was well steeped in the story, but, you know, time had passed and, you know, I, I never wrote a book about it. In October of 2020, uh, right before the election, um, the FBI arrested uh, a group of people um, who were plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer of Michigan. And Terry Nichols, who was the co-defendant in that case, uh, was also from Michigan. He was affiliated with the Michigan militia. Same with the same with the uh, um, the, uh, the the people who were involved in, in the kidnapping. And I thought, wow, this is like you know similar. January sixth happened a few weeks later, so I decided to look at the story again. First of all, it's just an incredible true crime story of how McVeigh did this, and and I certainly believe that McVeigh did do it. It's not like I, there's some conspiracy that he didn't do it. He certainly did it. And and the way he organized it and the way he, you know, got the fertilizer and the and the and the um, racing fuel and rented the truck, it's just an incredible story. But um, McVeigh has since been portrayed as um, someone who was like a lone wolf and an anti-government person. It's not accurate. McVeigh was part of the right-wing movement of the 90s. He was um, uh, someone who was a, you know, a big Rush Limbaugh supporter. He was a Pat Buchanan supporter. He was um, someone who was obsessed with um, the, the supposed fear that the government was going to take his guns away. Um, if you see that ideology moving forward, um, that ideology is, is, has been enduring. And the difference is that McVeigh didn't have the internet in the 90s. He didn't have the ability to communicate with like-minded people. And um, th those sorts of views are, com uh, are a lot easier to spread now. And if you look at whether it's January 6th or the mass shooters in El Paso, in South Carolina, in Pittsburgh, in Buffalo, they are all mobilized by the internet in a way that McVeigh couldn't. And I want to let Vinny talk now because <laughs> I know he thinks I'm well, so full of shit no, no, about no, all I, this. I, yeah. I think, and you, you, you left yeah. out that McVeigh was a psychotic murdering maniac. He's, he's absolutely, to do something like that, to kill all those people, you're insane. I do agree. Yeah, listen, January 6th, some idiots went there and they, they did some stupid shit, but one person died and it was Ashley Babbitt. She's a United States military veteran who was shot and killed. I th and we just found out again through all the Twitter files how many FBI agents were down there. Basically, and I saw the video of Ray Epps. He literally, yeah, if all those video, undercover FBI agents he, hadn't been there January 6th, how many more would have been killed? No, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is yelling at people, inciting violence and rioting from agents, on the floor agents, let's, let's just be honest with each other, pushing people in to go do it. One person died. And here's my question, Jeff. Can you blame, can you blame a group of people that know for a fact that they already tried to get cheated on, on January 6th, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 2016 election. They know that the, uh, Hillary and everybody tried to cheat to get Trump out. That was 100% cheating. Why would you blame them to think that in 2020 they wouldn't try it again? So can you blame people for not trusting a system and then going somewhere? Because I believe in this. If you have a problem with the system... You don't burn down your city. You don't do what BLM did. You don't do what Antifa does, which are actual terrorists. Antifa are domestic terrorists. You don't burn down your city. You go to the heart. Those people, some of them stupid as hell, I agree. Some of them vandalizing and beating the shit out of people. But when you have a problem with the system, you don't burn down your city. You go to the system. You go to the government, and they did that. And I hold on, and I get it. When people say threat to democracy, I, I don't believe that that was a threat to democracy. I think that was a bunch of pissed off people that were screwed once, and they believed. I don't... Believe it or not, they were like, you know what? I think we got cheated again, and they went to the heart of the stores. That's the, it. The, the, the protests are completely legitimate, and that's as an American as apple pie. I agree. Protest. But it's, it's, not, it's not 
legal or appropriate or in any way defensible to break into the Capitol. I agree. And I agree. Say, no, but so, I mean, absolutely. And, that, agree, and that's all we're talking you. about. I mean, yeah. we're only talking about the people in the Capitol. We're not talking about the people at the Eclipse I agree. Yes. who were at Trump's rally. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and also I think, you know, I, we don't know exactly what went on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but I don't think you can prosecute Trump for what he said in that speech. I agree. He said, you got to fight. Every politician says you got to fight. Right. That's not... Th the Beastie that, Boys said you got to fight for your right to party. party. Everyone yes, indeed. And, and who could disagree with that? <laughs> uh, but, it. <laughs> because you do have to fight for your right I to party. Jeff. And this is why, uh, Vinny, I told but, you, but, when but, you went uh, to let, January 6th... I want to hear what he has to say. No, 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 but, but, but um, you know, the, the difference is the crimes committed. And, you know, you can't commit crimes. That That's the that's what's... Um, Th that's you know what to me is indefensible and you know you, obviously you know McVeigh did something far more egregious obviously. but the engaging in violence in support of your political pos position is something that has carried forward I agree because I think listen anybody from only one side far oh I and mean, this is this is something that I you know I deal with in the book this fantasy that Antifa is somehow as dangerous as the right is is a is is a if you look at the statistics 75 percent of the political crimes in this country have been committed by people on the right Antifa is a tiny tiny percentage compared to the, to that I mean I, from what I've seen every time the right is trying to do something or speak or protest or have talk Antifa shows up just to cause havoc and shut them down because again you have to this, silence people with Portland, the other point of view. in portland and hardly any no what do you mean they just went to glendale and uh, they were in glendale california because Gl uh, armenian people were like you're not going to teach our kids mm -hmm. all this stuff they're underage antifa was there and they got their asses whooped by the armenian community and i salute them i, that, I get do, messages do left and right fact support what you're saying with the 75 percent it's, it's in the book yeah okay it's in the it's in what do you mean you yeah. said who cares term. about the facts hey, 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 no, no, you're entitled to your Jeff, opinion i'm gonna read this Jeff. book Okay. Okay. I'm going to take okay. this book. <laughs> Jeff, you said political political yeah. crimes is what you just said. Can you break that down? I know what a violent crime is. I know what aggravated assault is. When you say political crimes, politically motivated of, crimes, politically okay. motivated yeah, crime, crimes, you know that that you know like um, the the uh, Muslim extremists who shot up. Uh, I forgot which fort it was. Uh, the one of the army bases. The, the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. the um, psychiatrist in Maryland who or shot in Fort it. Hood, no, Texas. Fort yeah, Hood. Yeah. Fort yeah. Hood. I mean, that was a politically m m motivated crime. It was you know Islamic terrorism. Um, right Are you wing. Calling that from the right. No, not at no, all. I'm no. saying I'm, I'm drawing a distinction. Yeah. I'm saying it was not from the right. That if you there there is crimes from yeah. Islamic terrorists. There are crimes from the uh, the left, Antifa, mm -hmm. and there are crimes from the right. People like the white supremacists who shot up the Walmart in El Paso, the um, Dylan Roof who killed the people mm -hmm. in South Carolina Church, the uh, anti Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh uh, shooting synagogue, in the synagogue, the grocery store in in Buffalo. Buffalo. Those are from the right. That that's th those are the th sort of three general categories I'm talking about. And what what would you, what would you say? Because I mean we hear it, we hear it all the time from from the left, from the White House, from Joe Biden that the number one threat to the United States. Is is white supremacy? It's it's those and and, and, and I, and, and the, I get that's that. what the, that's what the numbers show that, and, that that's where most of the most of the threat comes from. Because we had mind we had two FBI whistleblowers here, and I asked them the very same question. You know what they both said? It ain't it ain't white supremacy. Is that he's like it's the actual insider threat, and he goes, it's the government against the people, and that's these guys. They were sitting right where we're sitting right now, and they said that that's what the threat was. He said the percentage. These are FBI agents. That the percentage of white White supremacist walking around causing problems. It, that's that's not the that's not the number one problem here. So, well, you know, if the audience wants to find out for themselves on the opposing argument or something they agree with, they can order the book home grown. The link's going to be below for you guys to order once again. Uh, thank you so much for coming out and being on the podcast. So Truly. terrific. Thank you all. You're a terrific group, and I really am grateful for the opportunity. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.